Hi, this is Phil Shapiro in Tacoma Park, Maryland. I have been reading a really interesting book, Neurotribes, The Legacy of Autism and the Future of Neurodiversity by Steve Silberman, forward by Oliver Sacks. So this is a big, thick book, like 500 pages, but it's oh so interesting. Steve Silberman is a storyteller and a historian and a scientist. He draws you into this book and I found it just a fascinating read. Let's take a look here. This is the back cover of the book and there's different people giving some commentary about the book. I work at a public library. I'm always on the lookout for the kind of book that after you've read the book, you become a better human being. This book falls into that category. After you read this book, you become a better human being. Why? It's because the lens that which Steve Silberman is able to look at the world and explain the world is a compassionate lens. It's a one that gives greater dignity to human beings. So when you look at the world through his eyes, you yourself become greater in your understanding of the human condition and you become wiser. So that's a, um, that's a very interesting part of the book. I really love the first chapter. The first chapter is, um, goes into Henry Cavendish, this very famous scientist from England. And looking back in time, we can understand now that he was likely autistic. And it explains his mannerisms and his, uh, the whole, um, all of his life. And, uh, it's so interesting to go back and look at it through the modern understandings. Over here in chapter two, I pulled out a quote that's real interesting. Uh, so this is uh, where Steve Silberman's describing a family in the San Francisco Bay Area who is raising um, an autistic child and how they adapt. It's so interesting here. Leo's father, Craig, produces science videos for KQED, a public TV station in San Francisco. Shannon Rosa is a blogger, editor, and software consultant. Each morning, they take turns helping their son get ready for school. The first thing that Leo does each day is read a list of icons taped to his door. So this is so interesting. Uh, people on the autistic spectrum tend to think visually. So this family has come up with a visual schedule that is much more suited for their child and um, that reduces the stresses in his life and uh, it just shows that with some adaptation on the part of parents and schools and society, uh, we can uh, have more harmony and less stress on people who are neurodiverse. Isn't that a good idea? I wonder if she got clip art from this website, openclipart.org. It's public domain clip art. I really love that website, openclipart.org. And in that same chapter, I love the part where Steve Silberman is debunking this myth. Raising Leo has transformed the Rose's world in ways they couldn't have imagined. One of the most common misconceptions about autism is that it drives families apart. Parentheses. It's a pernicious myth perpetuated by the media. Divorce rates are no higher for families like the Roses. So that's very interesting. We all need to be able to understand that. And um, especially journalists. <laughs> journalists need to understand that. Um, then Steve Silverman travels over to Austria to the early 1900s. And I pulled out this quote. He's talking about Hans Asperger and... Uh, 1911, Asperger and Weiss worked on a ward in the children's clinic founded in 1911 by a physician, school teacher, and social reformer named Erwin Lazar. His approach to special education would still be considered innovative today. Instead of seeing the children in his care as flawed, broken, or sick, he believed they were suffering from neglect by a culture that had failed to provide them with teaching methods suited to their individual styles of learning. So the important word there is suited. So very interesting. Erwin Lazar, he is a, his, a hero of the human mind from a long time ago. So we should be learning something from him. Um, 
In that same chapter, even the standards of normal conduct on the ward seem surprisingly open-ended. The criterion for classifying behavior as normal or abnormal was the challenges that it created for the individual child, not whether it strayed from an idealized template of psychological health. The key word there is idealized, so very interesting stuff. Um, Steve Silverman jumps at a different part of the book back to like the modern, modern times over in the Bay Area. Lee Felsenstein was a, a hero of the personal computer revolution with the Homebrew Computer Club, 1974 and 1975. I pulled this off of Wikipedia. Uh, he's somebody I admire a lot. And um, this is what Steve Silverman has to say. Felsenstein didn't know yet that he was autistic. As far as the psychiatric establishment was concerned, people like him didn't exist. He just knew that his girlfriends often complained that he didn't respond appropriately in social situations. And then, da, da, da. By 1968, the stress of being an undiagnosed autistic in the middle of a cultural revolution had taken a heavy toll uh, after a crash into a major depression. So here we are. He, this is this is Steve Silverman at his best, where he's explaining that we as a society need to grow in our understanding so, uh, um, so that we can better uh, appreciate the, the huge gifts that people who are neurodiverse have to offer to our society. And we should be adapting. We shouldn't expect people who are neurodiverse to, to change or adapt. We should be adapting as a society. We should have greater empathy, greater wisdom, and that'll reduce the stress on people who are neurodiverse and will create more harmony in the world. Wouldn't that be nice? This part I really found interesting. So this is a, a geeky part of the book. Um, most people think that the online communities were born with America Online in the late 1980s. But here on page 258, with the help of Lipkin and Sapowski, Felsenstein created the first electronic bulletin board in history called Community Memory. On August 8, 1973, the first wide open door to cyberspace was installed at the top of a staircase at Leopold's Records on Telegraph Avenue in Berkeley. So wasn't that interesting? Online communities date all the way back, all the way back to the early 1970s. That's something I didn't know and something I learned from this book. Um, Steve Silberman talks about Temple Grandin, a very important person who's uh, neurodiverse, a famous author, somebody who's taught so many of us. Uh, uh, and here's a quote I pulled. As one of the first adults to publicly identify as autistic, Grandin helped break down decades of shame and stigma. One nearly forgotten aspect of her coming out, though, shows how quickly the ground was shifting under her feet. To most clinicians at the time, the notion of an autistic dealt with a doctorate and a successful career seemed implausible. So this is really interesting. I love that. Temple Grandin is done a lot for this world, and Steve Silberman is expanding on what she's been doing. That's all good. Then over here, towards the very end of the book, um, Steve Silberman goes back, and here's a, a quote. A thorough review of history also vindicates Asperger's notion that autistic people have always been part of the human community. They've often been re relegated to the margins of society. So with the help of Steve Silberman, we're going to uh, have a little bit less relegating to the margins of society. So if your public library doesn't own a copy of this book, please ask him to buy it. It came out, I think, just last year. This is 2016, and I think this came out in 2015. So ask them to buy it. Um, you might want to purchase a copy and put it into the little free library on your street or in your neighborhood. Wouldn't that be a nice thing to do? Um, this book has exhaustive citations, so it probably took several years to write, maybe as long as three to five years to write. This particular book review I'm making, this took me about three to five hours, so I probably ended up on the better part of the deal here. <laughs> as I was working on this book review, I came across this other book that looks really interesting. This is a new book, Asperger's on the Inside by Michelle Vines. Asperger's on the Inside is an acutely honest and often highly entertaining memoir by Michelle Vines about life with Asperger's syndrome. 
The book follows Michelle in exploring her past and takes the reader with her on a journey to receiving and accepting her diagnosis. So check out this book. Um, it's looking really interesting. I think it's available just in electronic form. Uh, it looks like you can buy it for the Kindle. So. Some of you might be wondering how I'm making this uh, particular video book review. So I have a Linux laptop. I love Linux because it's inclusive. It's an operating system that's not Macintosh, it's not Windows. I'm using some free software for the screencast. It's called Simple Screen Recorder. I have a Logitech webcam that is sitting on top of my 23-inch monitor. I have a larger monitor connected to my laptop. So I have full 1920 by 1080. I'm recording my audio with an Olympus digital audio recorder. And I just wanted to show you the laptop that I'm using is several years old. It's a Lenovo ThinkPad T400. And um, here is some of those laptops, this model that was just sold recently on eBay for about $50 to $75. So isn't it interesting? You can make this kind of media making that I'm doing using a pretty affordable laptop. It might even be donated. It might be free. Then you put on Linux. I love Linux. Here's Linux Mint. This is what I like the best. This is what's installed on this laptop. And I'm using Simple Screen Recorder, totally free. I have a separate little uh, software over here called Camoso that is recording, that is just showing my, um, showing Camoso over here is showing the webcam. So the, uh, that's a separate little thing. And together, what I'm able to do here with all this free software is create something roughly equivalent to ScreenFlow on the Macintosh or Camtasia Studio on Windows. So, but I wanted to try and make this all for free because this book is all about creating a, a world with greater inclusion and understanding of people who are neurodiverse. And I, separately, am also working on creating a world that's more inclusive using um, open source software. So, now if you happen to like this book review and my other book reviews, I made a bunch of different book reviews in video form so that they can reach people who uh, have dyslexia, who, who appreciate uh, learning about books without having to read about them because they could access the audiobook perhaps. Uh, I've set up a Patreon page. So patreon.com is kind of like Kickstarter and people can donate a monthly small contribution, even a dollar a month. And uh, it's patreon.com slash Phil Shapiro, P-H-I-L-S-H-A-P-I-R-O. And you can make a little contribution. And uh, isn't that nice? It's a easy way for you to give a thumbs up for the book reviews I like to do and some of the other uh, community building and advocacy. This is Phil Shapiro in Tacoma Park. Hope you found this review interesting. Please tell others about this book. And thank you, Steve Silverman. You've done good.